found African Jamaicans and gone, yeah, man, the thing I want, you know, and them down the road, and it was they rather than they, and all that sort of stuff. And we're going into, and that was a thing, and they all did the snapping of the fingers thing. Yeah, man, that's the thing. That is it. That in the 90s, that was it. That's how lads greeted each other at school with a big puffer jacket on, and yeah, yeah, it was a weird time. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then it was, it was all that of, of, of the ridiculous baggy jeans which were halfway down the backside. Oh, that, that was a bad time to be in school. Yeah, 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 how, how that ever became a thing, God only knows. Right. Um, Let's, have, let's, oh, let's, let's let you see it first before anything else happens as well. Um, bu, 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 bu. Yeah. So let's play word association game, yeah, to begin with. I say salvage. Oh, come back, listen. And you, you say what? Animal. Oh, why did you say that? I think of and then I think animals. Right. Okay. Oliver, what do you think? Like the witch trial. Oh, Ooh. good one. I hadn't thought of that. Very good. Back to you, Sophie, for another, if you please. Radical. Mm. In the sentence, that salvage sounds like. I know it's quite sudden. And right. Mhm. Mm yeah. 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 No, it's something that happens sudden. Yeah. Okay. All about. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Within the te within within the text here. Yeah. Good. Sophie? And then if we think about I mean, here as well, um, You know, the more if we think about the words before it gets used in *Handmaid's Tale*, it is about um, sort of a, if we think about salvaging something, we are reclaiming that sort of thing. You know, you, you go to the salvage yard to get spare parts for your car and all that kind of malarkey. Uh, oops, that's not how you spell clean. You know, if we think about um, we save something or someone, you know, again, it's salvaging materials. If you, you know, if you salvage somebody from the wreckage of a building, that kind of idea, you know, disaster, all those sorts of things. Uh, and, and so it has kind of sort of, um, there, there is positivity in, in the word that we kind of normally do it. But again, within this context, different worlds, we have the wall. And very famously, there was a band that I do happen to like musically who did do an album called The Wall. And one of the songs from this album fits in rather well with this world of uh, Gilead. I give you, ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of Pink Floyd. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually am. Um, let's click on twice. Don't let me do that. This may well buffer, so we may not have this. We may have to listen at home. <laughs> this happened to an earlier one this morning. Um, <laughs> chucking, it's chucking, it's chucking, it's chucking. Yeah, didn't um, Mark Albert take a lot of things, not in exploration, but pulled a lot like, in terms of research out of the same finished trial? Yes, she did. Yeah, yeah, which is a big thing in, in America. Hang on, I know a better way we can get to this. That it's having a problem. I know it's having a problem. I think there's another way possibly we can do this. Um, just bear with me a little second while I have a rummage for this. Oh, it's all going a bit sluggish now. Um, change that for a minute. Mm -mm -mm. Extend. Extend. Right. So let's go here. Let's go to that. And that. So back to that. Cool. And then if I go to. Come on. Have they changed things again? Some did this live. Have the same first time it was on two girls for one. Three nine
I'll get Miss Alice to look. Thanks, Noah. Nice little angelic background singing going back, and then it turns it rather dark, just like the wall here. You know, nice song about, you know, anybody with a bit of prejudice about anything to come along to and picking out those in society, yeah, if you don't kind of agree with. That's it. I mean, he, he, he has that. I mean, if you don't, in case you don't know, he, 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 he still is, I think. Um, tad left wing is Roger Waters out of the band. Uh, you know, if you go back again, it had the whole hammer thing going along. It was red and the black, and it was it was very much that kind of you know he was getting at that you know sort of when society's turning a bit fascist. I mean, when this comes out, Margaret Thatcher and the Conservative government is high in power, and it's very obvious that Roger Waters didn't like Margaret Thatcher and her government. Um, you know. And there's lots and lots of lot of that going on. And it was that he was sort of having a sway at what he saw as being sort of right wing politics um, around the world at the time. <laughs> what you must think of the world right now. I mean, he's very strong again in the Israeli kind of Palestinian conflict at the moment. And um, that seems to be his big thing. He, I mean, he now lives over in America full time, as far as I can work out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I mean, this thing. I mean, again, that album. I get taken out. I get in various right-wing countries and whatnot around the world. I get banned. They just because some of the songs get taken as um, sort of uh, protest songs, like in South Africa, because we're still deep in apartheid at that point. And you know that we don't need no education off that album. They be yeah. That's the one, Sophie. Yeah. All the kids in the township began singing that because they were being denied education. And they go and protest, and, that, that's, and, and so the album gets banned, and he, he can't buy it for love no money in South Africa. It's refused to be airplay. But of course, you try and ban these things, it just makes it more and more, you know. And again, it gave the band an absolute platform then to go and say, Excuse me, what do you think you're playing that? <laughs> um, but then, I mean, the, the sort of gratuitous violence in those lyrics, isn't it? Again, in Picking Folk, we see this here, don't we, in, in, in Atwood, in this section of the, of the, of the book. Um, and again, it's how that would then conveys horror about this salvaging uh, that's taking place here. So, and she's this is when she's on her, her, her walk, isn't it? Um, back from from um, the, the, the doing the shopping sort of thing. And uh, now we turn our backs on the church, and there's the thing we've in truth come to see: the wall. The wall is hundreds of years old too, or over a hundred at least. 
like the sidewalks, is red brick and once had been, and must once have been plain but handsome. Now the gates have sentries and there are ugly new floodlights mounted on metal posts above it and barbed wire along the bottom and broken glass set in the concrete along the top. So from that description, that description, what does it make it sound as if this, this place is? Does it remind you of anything culturally at all? Um, chapter six, I think it is. Chapter six, yeah, chapter six. Um, we've got the floodlights, and um, we've got the barbed wire, broken. Well, funny, yeah, well, funnily enough, we'll come to that a little bit later. Funnily enough, that, that is highly kind of relevant in its own way. Um, but we've got the sentries and we've got, you know, we've got the floodlights, the barbed wire. What does it remind you of? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. 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 And again, funnily enough, again, you know, think of, um, you know, oops, Berlin. <laughs> think of um, Berlin, um, I say that, that landscape where it was still divided at the time when, when she's right. And again, exactly had that landscape between east and west at the wall. Um, exactly, and again, and that, and that, that still, they, they kept the landscape the exact same as it had been during the war, you know, from World War Two. You just left it and all those kind of rubble craters, all that sort of stuff, because it, it made it trickier to get across. And of course, be unexploded mines and all that sort of stuff in between it. So it's another way of sort of doing that. So that works really well for that as well, yeah. Um, can you think of anything else at all, Sophie? No, it makes you think of? Come on, we've got guards, we've got floodlights, we've got barbed wire up in the up in the wall. It's like a prison, isn't it? Or a prison camp. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but we've got that, and so again, it's changing. You know, something you just say um, from what it once was to what it now is. Uh, no one goes through these gates willingly. The precautions are for those trying to get out, though to make it even as far as the wall from the inside past the electronic alarm system would be next impossible. Beside the main gateway, there are six more bodies hanging by the necks, their hands tied in front of them, their heads and white bags tipped sideways onto their shoulders. Nothing ever in like films, books, anything to get some more of the kind of yeah. Well, it's just it is gruesome, isn't it? It is absolutely gruesome, you know. And again, so with the heads and white bags tipped sideways, yeah. Now, um, there's a lot that's, that's horrific in this, but what for you makes it, you know, kind of um, horrible. Yeah, it's the fine detail, isn't it? And what does the language lack at this point? Um, in a way. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Sorry. Yeah, that's what that's what it's all about. That is, that is. <laughs> um, so we've got this. You see, it, it, it's almost it's almost kind of forensic, isn't it? Um, you know, it, it, it's the precision in the language. Six more bodies, so you get the you get you got the number. Yeah, and so you get this idea of maybe like conveyor belt process, isn't it? 
and you know the hands tied in front of them the heads and weight back heads and weight bags what does that do what's that removing yeah the individual and why do that what, what's that saying to those that are on on the wall and maybe even to those who are looking um on the wall at those on the wall it could be right good yeah could be anyone, it could be you next. Yeah. Um. And that way as well, you know, it's the idea about the idea, but the head's just tipped. I mean, tipped is almost, it's a careless action, isn't it? It's kind of gentle at the same time as well, but it, it's that idea, it's just careless, it's just there. Um, and then we get the reason for it. There must have been a man salvaging earlier this morning, didn't hear the bells, perhaps I've become used to them. And so again, it's that idea, isn't it? You see it often enough, you hear it often enough, it just becomes your way of life. Remember, Aunt Lydia, you know, you will come to accept that this is normal. That's that kind of chilling, chilling world that we have here in, in Gilead. Um, we stop together as if on signal and stand and look at the bodies. It doesn't matter if we look. We are supposed to look. This is what they are there for, hanging on the wall. And so it's that idea. It's that deliberate action, isn't it? We are supposed to look. And again, it's this idea, isn't it? It's thought out. This isn't by chance. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, sometimes I'll be there for today the until there's a new batch. That's quite horrible, isn't that? A new batch. Mm. Fresh off the production line, isn't it? <laughs> Do, what, why? Why do you like it, Sophie? Why, why? The thing is, you're smiling as you say, it's so, so satisfying. There's a new batch on the wall. Why, Sophie? It's not in the context of scientific the word batch, is it? It feels like very. There is a linguistic reason for that, isn't there, Oliver? There's a linguistic reason for this, isn't there? Let, let's, let's marry language and lip, lip together. The fact that, you know, Sophie likes the word batch. What, why, why do you think it might be pleasing for us to say and to sound? Let's see what he's learned in language, Sophie. Eh? Oh. Yeah, putting you under pressure now. But it is that coming together. It's the sound, you know. You know it's the sound, isn't it? It's the quality of the words, you know. It's not very hard. No, you get that. You have that. Fun enough, you've got the BA, you've got the kind of plosive sound. Yeah, you've got that. To, it comes out with a bit of power and that nice shh sound at the end. It's a, it's a soothing sound. And CH, yeah, yeah. But anyway, rather than enjoying this, but new batch, it makes, it makes the language what here, would you say? What does that word batch belong to? Industrial or scientific, isn't it? Connotations there. Yeah, mass production, yeah, that kind of idea, yeah. And it gives you that idea of a kind of conveyor belt of death, you know. And it needs to be, doesn't it? Because you've got, you've got to put fresh ones up so that they, 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 think, they don't get too used to it and think, well, that's it. It only happens once in the blue moon, blue moon even. Um, and again, it's this idea about so as many people as possible have the chance to see them. What's hanging from the hooks? The hooks have been set into the brickwork of the wall. And this idea of them hanging from hooks. Where do you normally see that? Where would we normally see meat, in inverted commas, hanging from hooks? In a slaughterhouse or a butcher's, the abattoir, isn't it? It's just the carcass up in those big metal hooks. Similar type of, you know, hooks that's been done there. Um, the hooks look like appliances for the armless or steel question marks upside down. 
It's the bags over the heads that are the worst, worse than the faces themselves would be. It makes the men look like dolls, which the faces have yet been painted, like scarecrows, which in a way is what they are, since they are meant to scare, or as if the heads are sacks stuffed with undifferentiated material, like flour or dough. It's the obvious heaviness of the heads, their vacancy, the way gravity pulls them down, and there's no life anymore to hold them up. The heads are zeros. How grim indeed. The heads are zeros. What is that saying that Gilead says about you once you're on the wall? You are nothing. You are worthy of no mark, no recognition, no nothing. You amount to zero. And that does take us back, doesn't it, Sophie, to the kind of the world of the death camps. That's what the Jewish people have been told. You are subhuman. You don't belong in this planet. You know, we'll take everything from you and then we'll destroy you. That was the message that was coming through day in, day out to them all the time. And this is the sort of thing, and it's the thing that any dictatorship will want to do, isn't it? This is about breaking human spirit, defiance. But isn't it? Isn't it's that way we go through this transition, don't we, of the men are like dogs to begin with. So the simile being used there, isn't it, for a point of comparison, an inanimate thing, a plaything, a toy. And the fact that they have no faces on them, because again, with the bags, there's no features for them at all yet. And then what um, Atwood does throughout this, this text, isn't it? The pun, the play on words, they're like scarecrows, which in a way, what they are, they're meant to scare. So breaking that word down into its two constituent parts, isn't it? Very cleverly done, you know. And again, it's, it's the same thing she did, but it wasn't it with Mady. Yeah, that idea, she's always kind of learning the words. And then you got the language of this, isn't you, against the language of Gilead, the Computech, you know, that sort of thing, where, you know, the neologisms that are made up. Um, and then it's, isn't it, it's almost like, you know, again, being forensically picked apart here, isn't it? It's as if the heads are sacks stuffed with some undifferentiated material. So again, they've gone from being non-human, you know, gone from being a, you know, a man to a doll to something that's just stuffed. Taxidermy, Gilead style, isn't it? A grim display, you know, and again, it could be anything like flower or dough, and then it's only the heaviness. And again, isn't it, it's that sort of nice paradox, isn't it, you've got there? It's the obvious heaviness of the heads, their vacancy. You know, if it, how can it be heavy if it's vacant? But again, it's all life has been taken away here, isn't it? And then the heads of the, you know, and again, it carries on. We've got the, the zeros end, it finishes there. Though if you look and look as we are doing, you can see the outlines of the features under the white cloth, like grey shadows. The heads are the heads of snowmen with the coal eyes and the carrot noses falling out. The heads are melting. I mean, it's just unrelenting, isn't it, in this gruesomeness? And it's almost like this fixation. And again, here the narrator is like somebody who has been traumatised, haven't they? they? Because they can't stop themselves from looking and they can't stop themselves from retelling, you know, exactly in graphic detail for the for the, for the reader to understand here. Yeah. No. And again, if we begin to think about where on earth could she get get her um, inspiration from? Well, London Bridge in the early 1600s, you know. That's where the spikes of anybody who was a traitor cut off. Pop it on the bridge. Hung, drawn, and quartered. That's what happened to William Wallace on the back of it. What they do, they've got their leg tied to the horse, but they, to make it equally gruesome, they get what they call was a, hurt, a hurdle, just like a little wood strap. And so you're strapped over this sort of wooden hurdle. You think of the small, you know, those tiny hurdles that we had last year in sports day, the really ones close to the ground. Think of one of those, but you're strapped across it. You're, you're stuck to this horse, and the horse's backside is just scalped. The horse goes off, so your back, going over the cobbles, is just going on this wooden frame. So your back's going to get shattered, broken in multiple places. Anyway, they stop you before you get you draw your last breath. They stick you then up onto, um, what do you call it, the, the scaffold where you're going to get hung, pop you up for a quick hanging, cut you down before you've actually taken your last breath, or they don't do the drop properly, you know, if you were in the old days, well, 
hanging became a kind of like a sign, so it got the drop right, so the neck broke straight away, rather than actually being strangled as such, drawing out. But there they would do it that you were sort of basically choking in front of the audience. Hey, great, calm down. For people like William Walsh, real traitors, then what they would do would yet they'd eviscerate you, get that over, pull your guts out, fling them in a pan, flambe them a bit, you know, a bit of sauteing, yay, at which point you've you, you got to be dead. But once you've finished with you, yeah, they basically cut your body up into little parts. And like for William Wallace, various parts of his body get sent to castles in Scotland to be hung outside the battlements, saying, you want to take on the might of the English army? This is what you have to be willing to do. You have to go worse than this, because if we catch you, this is what we do to you. And everyone's been brutal. Vietnam, the Americans began to throw the Viet Cong. Yeah, what they would do, they, when they captured Viet Cong, take them up in the helicopters, up to 32,000 feet, chuck them out alive. And again, it was about being more and more brutal to each other, because it was equally brutal on the Viet Cong side, they got the Americans, and that's where the whole kind of Russian roulette came about, they made them play the game. They drug them up, and then one bullet in the chamber, spin the chamber, pull the trigger. Pinochet, funny enough that you should mention football grounds, uh, General Pinochet in Chile, uh, infamously as a, as a military coup. Anybody who was sort of socialist, left-wing, Republican, predominantly men this was, they get rounded up and they get taken to the football stadium. There was a huge, I think it was Boca, uh, the Boca football stadium, um, it, and they get taken in there and it was like a big internment camp. And then one day the army just went in and shot everybody. And the news of this travels around the world, and I'm happy to say, happy to say, um, my own nation took a stand against this, um, because we were due to play, Scotland were due to play Chile in a football match at some point, and they all refused to go. They said, before feet the match, we're not, not going to step foot in the football ground over there, after what has just happened. Um, and, and it, oh, thousands, thousands. It just, it was just, it was just a mass execution. Oh, but you look at, I mean, again, yeah, you, you look at anywhere where there's like a military coup, that kind of thing, what they do. I mean, look at what goes on. In a, I mean, we do, it's the, you hear bits and you think, well, what else is going on apart from the bits you don't hear about in these places? Wars are particularly, yeah, wars are brutal. You know, it, it makes this whole thing worse because we've that like, This is horrific. It couldn't possibly happen. And then you think, oh, wait a minute. Like, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, so and then that's what has been again. Go back to what um, Atwood herself says. She's put nothing into the book that hasn't happened at least once in human history, you know. But you see that, and again, you think about all these kind of different walls. I mean, <laughs> think about President Trump and his wall <laughs> stopping folk from getting across the Mexican border and things like that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, but I mean, again, and so you can see what she gets this. And again, again the Berlin Wall, and, 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 and when it was between East and West Germany, again, it was the snipers would quite regularly just sort of take sniper practice, fire at folk. You know. Yeah. Did you see, humans come up with some bizarre ways to treat fellow human beings under the guise of a war, or we're living in uncertain times. These, these things will remain in place only until such times. As normality has returned, of course, normality never returns. That's the problem. Yeah. Right. That's us. We've done. That was that was a very quick one, wasn't it? Um, it was very enjoyable. You're such a you're such a good duo, you two. You know. Yeah. Do you know what? Could it, what, could it possibly be worth another merit? That's what I'm asking myself, Sophie. <laughs> I can't, I can't give you two in one day, no. but <laughs> that's, that's against, that's against, yeah, that's against, well, 